the chairman of the Australian Turf Club, Johnny Cornish. And John, uh, a good week uh, out here at Warwick Farm in the West. Uh, the pro ride track up and running and plaudits all over from all the trainers. Yeah, thanks, Richard. It deserves those plaudits. I've I've seen virtually every track in Australia and many around the world. And on face value, this is the best I've seen. Peter Snowden gave us a huge rap saying that the, everything was done right from, from day one. And it's all about getting the right funding and, and then getting the right track. Yeah, these tracks can be pretty tricky if you don't put them down right. And it really, it's to do with the drainage. It's all to do with the drainage. But this is space age stuff they're using on here for the first time in the world. So it's just they've kept improving these pro ride tracks and uh, maybe they'll keep improving them as well. But this is as, as good as it gets in the world. Uh, Johnny, it wasn't that many years ago. What went wrong? We, we stood out here and uh, the club before you come along, but they spent a, a millions of dollars building a, a similar track and, and it failed. Yeah, I think if I'm being truthful about it, Richie, the, uh, the problem they had is they had a certain amount of money from World Youth Day uh, that, that needed to be spent out here because you will both re will remember, never forget, I guess, mm. the horses that got transferred out here, hundreds and hundreds, th thousands probably. And they had to build this extra track uh, and they had to build it quickly and they did it, but they built it on what is basically a tar service, a road, and just put this stuff on top of it. It was never going to drain, it was never going to work and it broke down and, and you know, I, it was probably a good thing at the time, but we've now made that uh, good thing a, a perfect thing. And this has obviously cost a lot more money than that, but the Peter Snowden said the drainage is just unbelievable. Well, as I said, that's the key to it. So what we went in was went in and did was take all the surface off it and cut drains in every few feet. And so now as this stuff as it rains on it, it drops down to the bottom and you can stand on the other side of it and see the water pouring out like a downpipe. It really works. I think this track, you might be able to get two or three inches of rain on it and be racing five minutes later. That's that good. Are we starting to see, um, we're starting to see little projects all come together out here at Warwick Farm and uh, it's starting to be spruced up that little bit. Yeah, there's a couple of things I could say about that, Richard. I mean, first of all, when I first came in here, Darren and I came out and met this community. They're a strong community here. They're really interesting people. And we promised them that we'd do quite a lot of things. And I thought they say, they said, oh, we've heard all that before. And here we are three years later, and we've delivered all those promises except one. And uh, it's been at a cost of nearly 40 million. And this money has been raised basically within this community. Bits of land that they no longer needed, bits of land that was separated by the new roadway, stuff like that, we poured it back into this track. So this is not a thing that's been inspired by the regulator or anybody else. This has been developed with, in conjunction with and with the cooperation of this community, and it's been delivered. So we've got one thing to go, basically, or two things to go, maybe, because one's an add-on. We've got to fix that Packers paddock up out the back and turn it into a trot and canter track uh, when this other one disappears, which will be next year sometime. And then we need to sort out this bend uh, here and make the straight a bit longer. They're practical things. You understand them better than anybody and uh, just mean better racing and more competitive racing. And we've got a design competition going on to, to sort this bend out and push it towards the river as we speak. There's other, so many other things. I know we've got the plastic running rails on both tracks and uh, you've done up also the uh, the pro ride track. We've got that. But there's so many other things. The, the race day stalls and, uh, and they were they were antiquated, but uh, they're now up to scratch and I think the trainers are pretty happy about that. Well, the trainers' huts standing, looking at us as we stand here. Yeah, the uh, stripping stalls were bought from Ramwick. Brand new they were. Hardly been installed a few minutes and came out here. They're fantastic. The, uh, all the old uh, day stalls there, you know, were falling down. You wouldn't want to lean against them. You'd end up in hospital. That's all been fixed and sorted. A lot of things, you know, that you don't see and you don't perhaps get credit for. But these trainers here, they know about them. They know what's, uh, what's good. Well, you own horses, John. It uh, costs a lot of money to, to own racehorses. And, and they've got to be given facilities that the horses are safe in their uh, environment. I suppose the pool's been updated and everything at the farm. Oh, yeah, the pool's been totally upgraded. Yeah, it was a bit of a worry. But there's just thing after thing after thing that's happened. And, you know, I'm soft for this community. I was raised here. And I think this community uh, is really the future of racing in many ways because of the young people that live out here, a million of them live between here and Campbelltown. So we've got to keep looking after them because in 10 years' time, they'll look after us. The confidence um, from the community, uh, and that's something you've got to work, keep working on. You're getting the confidence back from the local community. Yeah, hard, hard, Richard. You know, uh, you know as I do uh, that this place is hotter in summer by 10 degrees and colder in winter by 10 degrees. If you're sitting in one of the local clubs here in air-conditioned comfort and your kids are in on the ice hockey field that they've provided and all that sort of stuff, you know, it's hard to drag get them down to the races. Um, but that's the challenge for us. That's what we've got to do. And, yeah, we've got plenty of things in mind for that too. About £40 million been spent on uh, Warwick Farm and Surround since World Youth Day, but no doubt that you've got to dig deeper because there's, there's more to come. Well, we've got to move on as well. We've got to move on to Rose Hill next. That's the next one. 
you know, I unashamedly am proud of what's happening at Randwick. Um, now we've got to move to Rose Hill because uh, uh, that's that's got crying needs that you can see. A bit hard to do three or four tracks at once, but we have a plan to go to Rose Hill next. In this day and age, you know, the council and the regulator gets in the way a lot. It get in the gets in the way. I say advisedly, but that's the truth. So it just takes a bit longer than you or I might want, you know, to, to actually do things. And always a bit more money's got to be paid out for this or that or some contribution. So we're working through that now, and we're close. Keep working, mate. Thanks, mate.